If you're using Create React App, you're doing React wrong. In this video, I'm going to be talking about why Create React App is so bad and all the different alternatives you can use instead. These are going to be alternatives that are very similar to Create React App, all the way up to full stack frameworks that use React. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner and you need to stop using Create React App. I know Create React App is the way that you should always build React apps, that's what the React Dev team says, but the problem with Create React App is first, it's really slow to use in development, especially as your project grows and grows and grows in size. And on top of that, it just is not production ready. It doesn't have all the really nice features you want in a production ready React application. And then even further on top of that is it has no nice built-in features. There's no server side generation. Using things like TypeScript is a pain. So just doing all these extra things that you want to do with pretty much any project is a pain to do with Create React App. So in this video, I wanna talk about all the different alternatives to Create React App that you can use. They're all for different use cases. And I'm gonna be starting with the ones that are closest to Create React App. And at the end of the video, I wanna be moving to the things that are furthest from Create React App, like they involve the most amount of things like a full stack framework. So the very first alternative to Create React App I wanna talk about is Vite. Vite is essentially very similar to Create React App. You can build a React application using Vite and it's going to give you a very similar output to what Create React App does but it's going to be much, much faster. Running a Vite project is way faster than any normal Create React App project, and it's much more production ready because it has a lot of other features built into it. And on top of that, it has really good plugin support, so you can do things like add in different plugins that are going to add and change different features inside of your Vite project, which makes it much easier to add exactly what you want. On top of that, it has things like Post CSS built in right away, which is really nice, and a lot of other really convenient things built in. You can also build projects that aren't just React based, you know, you can do Svelte projects, you can do a normal JavaScript project, you can do Vue projects, you can pretty much do anything that you can think of. Also, it has built in TypeScript support. So that's really nice. If you want to build a TypeScript React application, you just have, you know, a couple clicks of the command line. And there you go. You now you have a fully built out TypeScript React production ready application. Now, the biggest con with Vite is that you don't have built in server side rendering or anything like that. So this is purely for a client side application, which means you probably aren't going to use this on a super large application. But for anything smaller scale or just client side only, it's going to be a great choice. Now the next tool I want to talk about is actually going to be two tools in one and that is Astro and Gatsby. And the reason I'm grouping these both together is they serve essentially the same purpose and that's going to be for SSG or static site generation. So if you want to generate a static site, a site that you know has a set number of pages that don't really have any dynamic content on them, then Astro and Gatsby are going to be great choices. Now these tools can be used to create dynamic content, but I find that it's not really what they excel at. And if you need a lot of dynamic content, the things we're gonna be talking about later in this video are gonna be great choices. But they have really good static site generation, which means you get all of the benefits of like server rendering that you don't have with Vite, but you don't actually have to worry about server rendering because everything is static and pre-rendered before you actually upload. Now a case where this is really useful is if you have like a marketing site where none of the pages actually change based on user interaction or like user data, that's great. Or like my blog, for example, is built on top of Astro. It used to be written in Gatsby and I swapped it over to Astro. I actually have a video on that. I'll link in the cards in the description, which will give you more differences between Astro and Gatsby. But the reason that my blog is using these tools is because each of the blog articles does not change. You know, I write the blog article once, I upload, and then the blog article doesn't change. It doesn't matter what the user is doing. It's always going to be the same. So I get the benefit of having a server rendered page, like a page that is actually going to be full HTML. It's not just a single div, but I don't actually have to worry about server rendering it because I statically generate the page before I even upload it to my host. Now, the reason that I really like Gatsby and Astro for this is they make it really easy for you to do all the static generation. It's all essentially built in. All you have to do is just write out your content. They have really good markdown support. My entire blog is written in markdown. So that's really useful for a lot of things that have static generation because you're going to be using markdown for a lot of that. And they have really good plugin support and all of those other features. Personally, of the two, I actually prefer Astro, not only because Astro has support for more than just React, like you can do Svelte inside of Astro, they have their own Astro components you can create. It's really robust in what you can do with Astro, but on top of that, it's just better in my opinion than Gatsby. Gatsby's kind of big and bloated and a little bit difficult to work with. At least for me, I find it's a little bit buggier. And Astro, I find even though it's newer, is actually a little bit more stable and easier to work with. Now, the next tool I want to talk about is going to be Next.js. You've probably heard of Next.js, and Next.js is just like React, but supercharged. So if you want to build a Next.js application, it's going to give you a ton of stuff beyond just a normal Create React application. And that's because now you're dealing with the server side of things. 
So far, everything we've talked about has been client side only. Next.js is the first time where we're actually diving into both the client and the server. So with Next.js, you can create an API directly inside of your Next.js application. Next.js also has really good support for server-side rendering. So if you need to server-side render any of your components, you can do that super easily in Next.js. Also with Next.js, you can do full static site generation. So the same thing you could do with Astro and Gatsby, you can do inside of Next.js, and you can even have a hybrid where some pages are statically generated and some are server rendered, and you can even have some just be purely client rendered. So you can kind of really pick and mix and match exactly what makes the most sense for your site on an individual page basis, which is really nice. Now, if you're building a purely static site, for example, Next.js is still a great choice, but personally, I think Astro and Gatsby are better, especially if you're doing things like a blog or a marketing site where it's really easy to write those. But if you need a combination of the two or just a purely server rendered site, then Next.js is going to be the best choice for you. It has all of those really cool built-in features the actual Next.js team works directly with React, which means that all of the greatest features of React are going to be perfectly implemented in Next.js and they actually work together to make sure that Next.js features work as well as they can. Honestly, I would say if you're building any larger scale application, I would go with Next.js unless Astro or Gatsby specifically fit the need that you need, which is like a very strongly statically generated site. Otherwise, I would just jump straight to next because a lot of times you may think your site is going to be fine statically generated and then you'll realize later on, oh crap, we need to add user data and login information and then as soon as you get to that point, server rendering is definitely the way to go. On top of all that, Next.js is actually just an enjoyable environment to work in. They have a lot of really good features like built-in routing, which makes it really easy to actually work with your components because you don't need to worry about creating your own router library using like React Router. It's just all built in directly into Next.js. Now the final category of different alternatives I want to talk about are the ones that are going to take a step beyond what Next.js does. So Next.js allows you to actually deal with the server side of things, like you can write your API and you can deal with server side rendering and things like that. But what happens if you want a full stack framework, a framework that's not only going to deal with your server and your client, but it's also going to deal with things like your database and how you have data passed between all your different layers of your front end and your back end. If you want a actual framework to do all of that for you and kind of prescribe what you should do, then you're going to want to turn to something like Remix, Blitz.js, Redwood. There's quite a few other alternatives out there. But honestly, Remix is kind of the one that currently sticks out to me as maybe the most popular or the most widely adopted. That's because recently Shopify actually acquired Remix. So Remix has kind of the biggest support behind it right now. But unfortunately, it's really too early currently to tell which one is going to run away. But if you're watching this video in the future, you're going to know which of these frameworks is the one that really kind of ran away, kind of like Next.js is definitely the top contender when it comes to that basic server side rendering, you'll know that, hey, Remix or Redwood or Blitz or even some new tool is going to be that clear winner. Right now, like I said, Remix is probably the winner for me, but that's just because it has Shopify backing it. So the big thing that these different levels of tools are going to do is that they have much more prescription and opinions on what you should do. So they're definitely going to have like a router baked in. They're probably going to be built on top of Next.js. So you already kind of have some familiarity with Next.js, hopefully, which will make working with these easier. But when it comes to things like sending data from your backend API all the way to your front end and where that data is stored in like a database or Redis, for example, all of that is going to be determined by the framework. So whether you're not using Prisma, for example, or if you're using Postgres versus Mongo, all those things are going to be figured out for you and how you query data. For example, if you use like React Query or not, so on, all of that's going to be built into this library. So if you just want something where you're like, you know what, I just want all these different tools and I want it to just work, this is going to be the option for you. And this is like the Rails approach. If you're familiar with Ruby on Rails, Ruby on Rails is a very prescriptive web framework that says, okay, you're going to use this database, you're going to use this database object, you know, ORM, all that kind of stuff that prescribes it exactly to you. And it's a very strict protocol on how you should do things. That's kind of what the approach of these is, which is really nice because the problem with most JavaScript frameworks and libraries is it's very open-ended on how you do everything. But with these different frameworks, they're essentially saying, no, you know what, we're going to tell you what to do and you're just going to do it that way, which makes it easier for you to write your projects. And the library and framework can do so much more for you because they can assume that you're going to be doing things exactly the same way every single time. So really when you want to choose one of these full-fledged frameworks over using something like Next.js is when you just want to have all the features built in for you. If you don't want to have to do the work of integrating your own database and dealing with the connection between your database and your front end and your back end, 
that's going to be where these tools really shine. But if you want to have a ton of customization or maybe you don't want to use all the tools that these frameworks have, then going with your own way of doing things with Next.js is probably going to be the best route. It really kind of depends on how mature the different frameworks are and how much you actually like the tech stack that they're built on top of. And that is all the major alternatives to create React out. I'm sure there's a ton of other smaller ones out there that you can look into, but these are the biggest ones that you're gonna see the most often. Now, if you wanna see me actually building projects using Vite and TypeScript, I'm going to have some of those projects linked over here, as well as my video comparing Astro and Gatsby, I'm gonna also have that linked right over here. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.